All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Stefan, Head of Network Growth for Protocol Labs. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit more about how enterprise data is being stored on Falcon, a decentralized storage network. First and foremost, as we're here at Davos, lots of new content gets created. And if you look at the cloud storage market for the next uh, couple of years, you'll actually see that on a yearly basis, cloud storage is growing at 24% year over year, which is amazing. Uh, but it also means that um, a lot of data that's being generated today won't be able um, to be stored just because of the budget constraints. And definitely now, as we're getting in a tougher economy, budgets are constrained. And so there, need, there needs to be a different solution in how we store and protect data today. And that's where Falcon comes in. We did a research with IDC, and we looked at how many enterprises are currently looking cl uh, using cloud and why they would be interested in decentralized uh, technologies like Falcon. So IDC um, kind of confirmed through the research that there, there needs to be a better way. And Web3, uh, which is basically the definition of decentralized architectures, decentralized solutions, um, provides a privacy conscious, secure, and efficient way to do so. And that's where Falcon comes in. Today, Falcon has grown tremendously. Just in the last year and a half alone, we have grown, you can see this staggering stocky, uh, hockey stick growth. Uh, we have grown for, um, and stored more than 500 petabytes of data. So that is half, more than half an exabyte of capacity of data that's actually stored on a decentralized storage network today. It's equivalent to 37 million hours of 4K video recording. So if I would be sitting here right now recording with my uh, iPhone uh, on 4K, I would be sitting here for the next 4,200 years. Um, so a staggering amount of data has been uploaded onto the network in a very short period of time. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and we'll share that with you today. Um, also, if you look at the total amount of clients that are coming onto the network, and this is global, we're not talking about US or Europe, we're talking about Korea, Asia, we're talking about um, India and so on. Um, lots of customers, clients are uh, actively using this decentralized blockchain network today. So why are enterprises using Falcon? Well, if we look at the, 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 some of the main reasons why customers today are looking at alternative solutions is because they've been using cloud technologies for the last 15 years and they have noticed that their costs are pretty expensive. Um, the availability, data availability uh, of having their data available within certain regions or uh, having certain redundancy comes again at a certain cost or is simply not available in the region where they want to store that data. Third is the verification of the data itself is not necessarily um, verified in a cost efficient way and is not uh, stored in an immutable way. And that's, that's actually what we're gonna talk about today, why the blockchains are so unique in solving this problem. And then regulatory requirements, we all know GDPR and other regula regulations that require certain um, um, data sovereignty uh, regulations in, within, or data to be stored within country, let's say, and so on. And then understanding the carbon footprint, which has become more and more important, understanding how much um, power consumption your data is, or the uh, servers that are actually storing and protecting the data um, are, are utilizing. So today, Falcon is 95% less expensive and sometimes free because we're in this nascent uh, early stage where there's a ton more capacity available than there is data being stored on the network. I told you earlier, we are storing today more than half an exabyte or 500 petabytes of data just as of this week, um, but we have 15 exabytes, so we have um, 15 times more or like um, available capacity that is sitting out there and is, you know, accepting new data. Second is um, the availability. A lot more customers or uh, businesses today are looking for data to be stored across multiple regions, across multiple locations, and with Falcon being a truly decentralized network that is distributed across 44 different countries and is um, and exists of 4,000 systems globally. Um, it has been um, a perfect solution for those customers looking for multiple locations. Third is the content-driven content verification. So the way data is stored today is, um, is basically done through cryptographic hashing. So what we're doing is on a daily basis, we're actually verifying that data through cryptographic hashes 
so that we can guarantee data integrity. And that's super crucial for um, anyone who's storing data set, large data sets that are uh, stored for long-term preservation, where every single bit matters. And so this is very unique because you don't have to actually verify the data yourself. The algorithm, the network itself, natively protects and verifies this on a daily basis. And then th fourth, uh, the ability to store data within region. Um, you know, some of the cloud providers today don't have any data centers within physical certain physical locations because they will only open data centers when it makes sense for them. And it makes sense for them when there's enough demand, when there's enough, um, you know, predefined business, basically. Uh, and so in our network, anyone can join the network. Anyone can spin up a Filecoin server um, in a local data center. And so this opens up a ton more opportunity to go after emerging countries. And that's why we're also seeing growth in Latin America, we're seeing growth in Africa, where there is no infrastructure. And so a lot of this um, actually enables a ton more opportunities, not just for clients, but also for service providers, businesses that are providing a service to enterprise clients to store and protect that data. Fourth is the carbon footprint, ESG. Um, so today with uh, Falcon Green, our green initiative, we actually have full transparency in how much, con how much power is being consumed across our network. We track and trace, and we also do a ton of effort in um, helping uh, standardizing carbon credits and so on. So very big initiative for us, because from the ground up, as you're building a new infrastructure, you actually have the opportunity to do it from the ground up and use green energy sources like hydro or um, 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 solar energy and so on. So um, when we look at the survey results, um, and we talked to more than 300 enterprises, and we asked them, are you familiar with decentralized storage technologies? And uh, what are some of the challenges that you're dealing with today? Then they came back with like multiple, uh, notific and multiple uh, observations, but three of the major observations are, one, that 41% of the enterprises had experienced high or unexpected egress costs. And this is so important. What does this mean? That means that if you as an enterprise, you're storing data in Amazon, Google Cloud, or any of the public cloud providers, it is relatively cheap to move data in the cloud, but it's extremely expensive to take that data back out. And why is that? That is because these cloud providers are incentivized to keep those data assets in the cloud, because as data is stored in the cloud, you're gonna use it, you're gonna pay for more of their services, uh, which is obviously the end goal in Falcoin that we have a open marketplace where um, there are no defined egress costs, and so it's up to the market to define what the actual cost is. Um, second, enterprises were 53% of the enterprises weren't able to use public cloud as data storage um, because of regulatory compliance. So, for example, there was no location in the country where the data had to be stored, so they had to go and look for an alternative solution. And then 83% of the enterprises view the control of the geographic distribution as a way to meet those regula regulatory requirements. And this is exactly where Falcon is a perfect fit for um, those entities that are looking for data to be stored in like a local country or a certain region uh, with certain requirements. So um, who is onboarding data today onto the Falcon network? You've seen an, an awesome presentation from Jonathan Doton uh, from the Starting Lab, but there's a ton more other um, companies that I would like to point out to uh, today, and, and one of them is Berkeley. UC Berkeley, um, one of their um, departments, the underground physics group, um, who's doing research uh, in uh, what they call neutrino detectors, basically research for, that's uh, researching dark matter and so on, um, is uh, storing data on Filecoin because a couple of reasons. One, they love the immutability. So when you store data onto the Falcon network, every single data asset is stored immutable, which means that there's no way for you to change the data as a storage provider that's, let's say, hosting that data, or it will be notified and it will be identified immediately through those cryptographic hashes that we verify on a daily basis. And two, the geographic distribution and decentralization, meaning that they can actually distribute the data, store multiple copies across the network, and third, um, verifiability. So the fact that you uh, have this source of truth, basically, because when I talked to this researcher and I asked him, you know, why is this so important? And he said, well, every single bit that I capture is important for me. Because in the future, as I improve my, you know, analytics algorithms and um, I get better access to, or cheaper access to, or access to cheaper compute, 
I can run new models and I can go back and actually like maybe find new insights. So researchers in general want to focus their time and um, budgets as much as possible on doing analytics and identifying new insights, obviously. And so the cost of storage is sometimes left behind. And that's where we come in, right? So we're not only providing a more cost-efficient platform, but natively into the product, data is automatically stored immutable, it's verifiable, and so you can basically trace um, changes and so on and um, do that in an affordable way. And you know, these detectors, they store hundreds of petabytes of data very quickly. Um, second is generate, again, another research um, technology that is basically a, a, a platform that manages genomics data. And so here as well, genomics is a huge space for us um, as genome therapy has you know, taken off and costs have gone down in, in um, uh, sequencing a, a single genome. Um, that also has increased the, the need to store more data and more genome data is being protected. And so generate is one of those platforms that is storing data today on Falcor. A third one is an interesting one. Um, this is more a platform that tries to democratize geospatial data. So when we're looking at um, the planet, right, so this particular uh, solution is trying to, uh, through um, consumer drones, incentivize consumers to use these drones to like index uh, the earth. And so they get compensated for that, and that data is then stored onto Falcon as well. Again, traceable, verifiable, and this is a, a consumer uh, platform that eventually will contribute to also more uh, open data sets in the future that where customers can, can do analytics on. And we have plenty more. So we focus a little bit more on the Web 2 side, but obviously we have a lot of Web 3 customers like OpenSea. Uh, we, have, we currently store more than 120 million NFTs and growing on a daily basis. But as you can see, our platform is a decentralized storage platform for Web 2 and Web 3 uh, customers and platforms that are looking to store and preserve data in the long term. Now, um, if you today want to store data onto Falcon, we recommend you to go to dataonboarding.falcon.io. There you'll find all the information on how to bring your data to the network. One of the things we have worked on in the last three months to bring this new Web3 technology to the enterprise um, has been um, through a, setting up a new decentralized storage alliance. So what we said is let's work with the key Web2 uh, companies like uh, AMD, Seagate, Ernst & Young to help bring these technologies to the CIOs, the CTOs of the enterprises as we know that this is a brand new technology and a lot of questions are still coming up and Customers are intrigued in how they can connect this to their existing applications. And so um, if you go to our website, you will actually find all the information on how to onboard. And if you're interested in joining our ecosystem, then please let us know. Again, reach out to us because we are building a ton of new practices um, in how existing storage administrators, backup administrators, um, application designers um, can, con can contribute and leverage our decentralized network. So with that, I want to thank you um, for joining us. And if there's any questions, please go ahead. Thank you so much for a, um, 